So in this video, we'll go through 6.5 and radical functions in case you missed something in class or if you were absent. So first thing we look at is just the function y equals the square root of x. So we see if we make a table of values and we just plug them in starting at 0, if we plug in what the square root of 0 is just 0. So we get the point uh, 0, 0. And then if we plug in the point 1, square root of 1 is 1. So there's our next point. Okay, and then if we plug in 2, we get a decimal. Square root of 2 is not a whole number. It's about 1.41, so that's about here. And then we just keep going in this fashion. Notice the only whole numbers uh, happen when we, when we plug in perfect squares in for x. So 1, 4, 9, the next one will be 16, 25, 36, and so on. So square root functions grow very slowly because all these numbers in between are, are decimals and they're very, uh, go up in small increments. So, and it would just keep going and going. So notice uh, if you're thinking like x-intercept, y-intercept, they're both at zero here. Technically it touches the x-axis at zero and the y-axis at zero at this point right here. And then uh, notice it does not cross below the x-axis. So there's no negative, there's no negative inputs. We cannot let x be an in, an, a negative number. So the domain or the input cannot be negative. Another way of saying that is x must be greater than or equal to zero for the domain. If we plug in negative numbers, say for if we plug in x equals square root of negative one, this is not a real number, not a real number. Maybe in a math class you will study imaginary numbers. Um, this is actually equal to i. And yeah, we won't study that in this class, but maybe you will in a different math class. So let's look at some other graphs um, and look at you know, x and y intercepts, since that's what we do with every function. So this, this first on the, on the left, square root of x, and then the minus 2 is outside of the square root part. So if we were to make a table of values, we plug in, start with 0, we'd get square root of 0 is 0, and then minus 2, and that would be our y-intercept. Okay, and then if we plug in, plug in 1 for x, we would get the square root of 1 is 1, minus 2 is negative 1. So the point 1, negative 1 is on there. And if we keep going, if we plug in 2, we're going to get a decimal. So um, it's kind of hard to see that point. But if you look up, up to here, we plug in the point 4. Square root of 4 is 2, minus 2 is 0. So that's where the x-intercept is. x-intercept. Okay, now how would we find that? Uh, by hand, remember to find the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x and solve for y. Okay, that's why this ends up being negative 2. And to find the x-intercept, oops, plug in the x-intercept, or find the x-intercept, plug in 0 for y. And you have to solve this equation for x. So if we had an equation 0 equals square root of x plus uh, minus 2, the first thing we have to do is add 2 to both sides. And so we get 2 on the left, and that's equal to the square root of x. Now how do we undo the square root? We square it. We raise it to the second power. And that's why 4 equals x. That's this point right here. So now to do the same thing with this second problem, uh, if I want to find this x-intercept at 2, I plug in 0 for y, and I solve for x. Now, the only way to get rid of this square root is to square the whole thing. 0 squared is just 0. But now this x minus 2 pops out, and I can add 2 to both sides of the equation and get 2 equals x. So that's my x-intercept. Now, notice there is no y intercept. This is the y-axis. 
the graph's just going to keep going like this forever in that direction. It's not just, it's not going to like wrap back around or something uh, because that would not be a function. Remember it has to pass the vertical line test to be a function. It should only cross one spot. So if I'm, if, but let's say I don't know this and I, and I just plug in zero for X, zero minus two. The way I know that there's no Y intercept is because zero minus two is negative two and Y can't be equal to the square root of negative two. That number doesn't exist because there are no two numbers that multiply to get negative two that are the same number. Think what times what equals negative two. There is no such thing which is why there is no y intercept. Okay. Um, now, if we want to find the x and y intercepts and we're given the equations and we don't know the graphs, just some more practice. So x intercept, we want to plug in zero for y, solve for x. You want the x intercept, we're solving for x. So then once we do that, we square both sides zero squared is zero, x minus one pops out, we add one to both sides. There's the x-intercept. Now the y-intercept, we plug in zero for x. So zero goes in here, and then we get zero minus one, which is square root of negative one. And so there is no y-intercept. No y-intercept. Okay, number two. If I start with the x-intercept, plug in zero for y. Okay, since this minus five is outside the square root, I can add five to the left. And then to undo the square root, I just square it, raise it to the second power. So we get 25 equals x. This would have a, an x-intercept crossing at 25. And then the y, Let's see if there is a Y intercept by plugging in zero for X. And now there is gonna be one because the square root of zero is just zero. And then zero minus five is negative five. So the Y intercept is gonna be negative five. So if you're thinking like, what's this gonna look like? Maybe here's zero, here's the X axis. We're gonna have a Y intercept down here and the x-intercept, let's go by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 is going to be here. So this is going to kind of look like this. And just keep going in that direction. Okay. And there's going to be nothing, nothing over here. Nothing over here and nothing down here. Just like this. Okay. Number 3, plug in 0 for y. Solve for x. So we're gonna square both sides, we just get zero, and then add six to the left, divide by three, and we get x equals two for the x-intercept. And then for the y-intercept, I can already tell there's not gonna be one because if we plug in zero in for x, we get three times zero, which is zero, three times zero, and then minus six, we would get square root of negative six, which does not exist. So there is no y-intercept for number three. Okay, last uh, example here. We're given a graph here with no, you know, we've got the x-axis, but no numbers on it and no numbers on the y-axis. We've got this function that starts right here. Looks like it has a y-intercept at three. And then it kind of, it just goes up here and we've got the line y equals six. So this is six and it's just a constant line. We want to find that point right there where they intersect. And so the way we do that, if these are both equal to y, okay, if y equals six and y equals square root of x plus three, then that means that the right side must be equal. So I set the right side equal to each other and then I solve this equation for x. So I, since this plus three is outside of the, the square root, I don't have to square it, I can just subtract it. So now I have square root of x equals six minus three is three, and now I just square both sides to cancel out the square root, 
and 3 squared is 9. So the coordinates of this point must be 6, uh, sorry, it must be 9 and 6. Because 9 is the x coordinate, 6 is the y coordinate. That's already given. Okay, that's it for section uh, 6.5. Thanks for watching.